the move towards nostalgia in media has always seemed like a lame thing to me. The overproduction that happens with this is at its worst when it simply hinders modes of innovation. I'm happy to say then that Cleaners, the 2019 anthology film by Glenn Barrett, is far from that type of walk down memory lane. There is nothing like it I've ever experienced. At the same time though, everything in it feels so familiar. I've met these people. I've said these lines. I've heard these stories. It's hard to recall many representations in media being so idiosyncratically Filipino. It was fun being surprised with how universal the stuff I've been through actually was after seeing this film swing for such niche occurrences. Its rendering of nostalgia is more than the usual, oh hey, remember this, of Hollywood in this decade. A lot of this cuts pretty deep and approaches the anecdotes in a more reflective manner. Even the way it exists as it does is clearly not for the same reasons that Ready Player One does. It was directed in a way that handled the tone so well considering it was maneuvering around potentially overly sentimental, corny content with a fair share of touchy subjects. The film was firing on all cylinders. I've mentioned the direction, but the sound design, the soundtrack, editing, the casting was all fantastic and definitely carried their own weight in the company of its headlining art style. But oh my god, the art style in this. Grabe. Look, I'm gonna be honest, I was worried the gimmicky nature of it would get old sooner or later, but it was so intertwined with the overall tone that every second of it was so charming and captivating. In fact, I'd say I could have watched 10 more hours of this. And it's so deceptively simple. Just photocopy and highlighter. It's such a perfect crash of mediums for remembering these stories. The grunge of black and white and then the untamed highlighters making a flashy mess of it. The memory-like fragments of amateurly copied still images made kinetic at 8 frames a second, and the disavowal of any regularity by the do-it-yourself strokes of color dancing on it. The cheap, unpredictable quality of the piece of print allowing the vivid imagination of people just exiting childhood to color over it. It's the ordinary student's simple artistic expression of doodling over textbooks but extended into the lives of those students. It brings the same excitement that enticed Carlos and Junjun to vandalize a brick wall with a creatively drawn penis. And it's trying to color inside the lines, even if you just know that the colors have the energy to just burst out. The movie takes place at that point after our more anarchic childhood coloring habits. They're already being put into these boxes. We see that especially with Junjun's story, but I think that messy sense of identity is really everywhere here and, of course, out there in actual high schools. And the look it creates is, again, so characteristically Filipino high school. It captures something that really can only be said through its images within the context of the story and likely a lot of personal context for the viewer which ideally would be someone who went to high school in the Philippines during the late 2000s and early 2010s. Someone like me. This film is made from the same supplies I've used to make projects with. Looking at it reminds me of that fun handmade process that is usually not present in making a movie. And looking at it too reminds me of the underfunded quality of education, which runs in parallel with the underfunded industry of independent regional filmmaking. Did you know it's not only the first film to be completely photocopied and highlighted? Another revolutionary thing is that it's the first film to be made completely in the small provincial city of Tugigarao where director Glenn Barrett went to high school. 
When he was pitching the movie, he was often suggested to take those two unique things about it out of the equation completely. The business standpoint was to just go with whatever already sells, of course. They were suggested to shoot the film without the radical treatment and do that closer to Manila as usual. So what makes me even more happy that this miracle of a movie that had to be put up for crowdfunding got as big as it did is that it's definitely gonna highlight the voices outside of that dominant center. Growing up in Tugigarao, direct Glenn Barrett wondered why the heck their TV sets would keep showing the traffic situation in Manila when it's not remotely relevant to them. He says that regional cinema being shown and discussed can be the counter-reaction to that. So I'm really glad that this got as much support as it did. I hope that grows because I definitely want to see more of this. And of course, I'm not asking for a cleaners franchise cinematic universe thing. I'm saying I want more films that just come from somewhere no film has ever come from before and then just dare to go somewhere no film has ever gone. Watching cleaners is like taking out all the stuff from your locker or cubbyhole or Jansport backpack on the last day of school and just seeing everything. Things you've of course seen before, but also the dirt, the grime, things you didn't really plan on revisiting, the bulk that just kind of gets filtered out in nostalgic media. Cleaners is past that cool detachment that most nostalgic movies have. I mean, sure, it still applies that irony, referentiality, and playfulness on being conscious with film form, but it's to achieve a whole new flavor of sincerity. When the emo kids are sincerely crying, we are detachedly laughing. But as that happens, we go through obtaining a sincere realization of what we used to be and how much we've grown. It's really through that roller coaster that we get an ending as cathartic as the one here. It's the students breaking free from the pressure of being pure and clean, while the film itself completely explodes out of the standards of prestige, glossy, and perfect cinema. The way this, and really every other event, was artistically rendered allowed for an experience that felt even more of a carbon copy than even my own memories of like events. But accuracy and nostalgia is never achieved, and was never the point. Our world is messy as it is, but I've just about had it with cleanliness.